everyone and welcome to my latest video. In this video I'll be showing you my Dreamcast refurbishing process from start to finish. This right here is the Dreamcast that will endure this process. While functionality wise it's perfectly fine, our goal here is to restore this Dreamcast to better than factory condition. As you can see the shell is quite yellowed so the first thing we'll be doing is restoring its original color. After that we'll be installing a region free BIOS chip, widening the power supply pins, replacing the clock battery, installing a resettable controller board fuse, and finally we'll be doing some scratch removal and general cleanup. As you can tell, we have a lot to do, so let's get started. So before we get started, let's disassemble our Dreamcast. So the first thing we'll be doing is whitening the shell. Since this step requires a lot of time, I think it's a good place to start. To do this, we'll be using a product called Salon Care Volume Cream 40. I'm not sure exactly what this stuff is supposed to be used for, but it works great for restoring discolored plastics. You can find this on Amazon if you're in the US. If you're in Europe, you can find an alternative called Jerome Russell Blonde Maximum Lift Cream Peroxide. Either one of these will yield similar results. The whitening process is very simple, but I highly recommend putting on some rubber gloves before messing with this stuff. Trust me, you do not want to get it on your skin unless you're going as the Stay Puffed Marshmallow Man for Halloween. All you need to do is take both pieces of the Dreamcast shell and apply a nice coat of the whitening cream. Once you've done that and coated every nook and cranny, grab a roll of clear plastic wrap and wrap both the bottom and top shells. This is to prevent the cream from drying out in the next step, which is to put it out in the sun. It's kind of ironic considering the sun, or UV rays more specifically, is what caused the yellowing in the first place, but with this magic cream it actually reverses that same process. So go ahead and put them outside and let the magic happen. This process will take about 6 to 12 hours, depending on how badly discolored your Dreamcast is. While we wait for our Dreamcast to whiten, let's make some improvements to the internals. Firstly, we're going to replace the BIOS chip with a region free one. This will not only allow you to boot games from any region without a boot disk, but the awesome BIOS by Japanese Cake will allow you to do a whole host of other cool things, like booting non-VGA games in VGA, and copying those copy protected VMU saves, the latter being especially handy for backing up your PSO characters. This video isn't meant to be a tutorial, so I'm not going to go into detail on how to replace the BIOS chip, but I hope you enjoy this time lapse of the process. The next step in the process is to widen the power supply pins with a layer of solder. The purpose of this is to allow them to have a tighter connection with the power supply, which will hopefully prevent the Dreamcast from contracting the dreaded random reset issue in the future. This footage is actually from a video I did previously on this fix, so if you're interested in exactly how to do this, check out my video on how to fix the random reset issue. The final modifications we're going to make to this Dreamcast are on the controller board. 
These include replacing the clock battery and swapping out the old fuse for a resettable one. The battery we'll be using is an LIR2032. This battery does have a slightly higher voltage than the original, but don't worry, it won't cause any problems. I've used this same battery in my own Dreamcast for years, and it's worked great. The fuse is a 72 volt 400 milliamp poly switch. The reason for using this instead of a standard fuse is because it will automatically reset itself. So if the fuse ever blows, all you need to do is turn off the Dreamcast for a few seconds, and then turn it back on, and voila, your controllers work again. Alright, so after a 6-12 to 12 hour sunbath, our Dreamcast shell should be nice and whitened. The final step in the process is to give it a good rinse and remove all the whitening gunk. After waiting a bit for our Dreamcast shell to dry out, it's time for the final step of the shell revitalization process, scratch removal. As you can see, there are quite a few scratches and marks on this particular Dreamcast. Most of these can easily be removed with some 91% rubbing alcohol and a bit of scrubbing with some paper towel. At this point, the refurbishing process is finished both inside and out. Now it's time to reassemble and take a look at the final product. And there you have it folks, one completely refurbished Sega Dreamcast. Not only is it looking much better cosmetically, but it's also region free and resistant to some of the most common issues that ail Dreamcasts. I hope you enjoyed this video on how to give your Dreamcast a fabulous makeover. If you found this video helpful or at least enjoyed watching it, be sure to give it a like. Thanks for watching everyone.